All right, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into this 420. Um, it's having a hard time running, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's the carburetor. Um, but I want to test the compression on the engine because it smokes a good bit. Uh, and it's actually used a little bit of oil, and I've only put a couple hours on it. So what I'm going to do uh, is just do a video on how to test the compression on the engine. Now, what's really important here is I'm only testing the compression. I'm not doing a leak down test. Um, <clears throat> A leak down test is basically to tell you where you're, you might be losing your air at, uh, so the valves, things like that. So, in other words, if you have compression and say the, your valve seat's bad or something like that, uh, your compression will go out through the valves before it has a chance to, uh, before the fuel has a chance to ignite. But um, I'm not going to do a leak down test because I, I don't think I need to, but what I am going to do is I'm going to do a compression test. I just want to see the general health of the engine. Um, so, and I'm going to do a really simple one. Um, there's two ways you can do this. This engine in this case is, is kind of warm. Uh, it ran for about 10 minutes, uh, about a half hour ago. So the engine's still relatively warm. You can do a cold um, test and then you can do a hot test. Or you can do a cold test and then you can put some, you know, put like a, just a couple uh, squirts of oil in a, a cylinder and that'll basically tell you um, if it, the compression should improve and the amount of compression that it improves will tell you kind of, of the health of the engine, health of the rings per se. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I've got it set up, I've got my compression tester. Uh, you can either pick these up uh, for, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks I think. Um, on Amazon or, or if you want to buy a nice one. I don't have a nice one. Um, I think I bought mine on Amazon many years ago, uh, at least 10 years ago, or no, about seven, eight years ago now. Um, and, uh, or you can go to the auto parts store and uh, they, they loan a lot of auto parts store like O'Reilly Advanced, uh, things like that. They'll actually, they have loaner sets of these. Um, so you'll get, you know, some adapters and then uh, you'll get your normal one. Uh, and actually these, the, the normal ends work just fine for these own ends. So uh, what I'm going to do is set the camera up. We're going to do a compression test. Um, I've got the socket out for the, um, the spark plugs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take each one of our spark plug wires here. I'm going to put it to where it's not going to create a spark between the machine. That way the engine doesn't run. Last thing you want to do while you're doing a compression test is have the engine run. So I'm going to put that right there. So those are nice and safe. Now the engine won't fire because there's no spark. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I'm going to set the camera up and we'll do a compression test and we'll see where we're at. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just take the spark plug out. Um, spark plugs will be different sizes. I think this is a 5.8 spark plug wrench. Uh, they shouldn't be in there too tight. If they are, that's probably a problem. Uh, if you install, uh, these are aluminum heads, so if you install a spark plug too tight, there's a good chance that you could actually uh, strip the threads out of the head. So, spark plug looks okay. Got a little bit of oil on it. Um, on the, on the, the uh, threads right here, not overly shocked about that, uh, based on how much this machine smokes. So now what I'm going to do, just because it's easier, I'm going to take my air hose here. We're just going to thread this in there. There is an O-ring right here that will keep the compression, um, measure the compression. This sometimes is probably the biggest pain because you're trying to, you're using a flexible hose to uh, get in there. All right. So that's nice and tight. Now we're going to put this, this is just normal air hose end. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the engine over a little bit until the needle stops moving. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. I'm going to turn the engine over until the needle stops moving and we'll see where it's at. All right. So we are at ah, about 104 PSI. Hopefully you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit on the camera. So hopefully you can you can see that we're at 104 psi. And so that's where this side at. And just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Sorry about the camera. 
That way I've ensured I've got a good measurement twice. And we're at approximately 104, 103, 104 again. Okay, so that's this side. So now what I'm going to do, take this, take the hose back out. Now, minimum compression on the P series is 100, I believe. Maybe 90. There should be no more than 10 PSI difference between the two sides. Um, honestly, I cannot remember what... Uh, gosh, that's sad. I used to have these numbers memorized. Um, I cannot remember what the minimum compression on the P-Series is. So. All right. So now we're going to do the other side. All right, so now we're going to do the other side. Take out our spark plug here. Nice and easy. Okay, now if you look at this, I would venture based on these threads right here, these threads are quite a bit cleaner and this plug itself is quite a bit cleaner. So I have, I'm wondering if this side doesn't have a little bit higher compression uh, than the other side. Now what's really interesting is normally you would expect uh, the right side of an Onan like this to be have the lower compression. Uh, mostly because uh, it's the last guy on the food chain for the oil system. So we're going to put this back in here like this, just like we did on the other side. Hook, our, hook up our compression gauge, get a good view here, hopefully, yep, you can see that. And we'll turn it over. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, this one's quite a bit higher. Uh, so this one is at, what, 110? That what it looks like? It looks like 110 to me. I'll try it again. There's a little release button here on the side. Yep, 110. Maybe even a little higher. Um, now we'll put that in comparison if I was to do this on the, the, the 318 that I have. Uh, last time I checked the compression, which was a couple years ago now, uh, but I haven't run it but more than about 12 hours since. Um, and right after I built that engine, uh, right after the rebuild, the compression was somewhere around 125, I think. Um, and uh, I think the last time I tested it, it was at 120, uh, both cold and hot. So um, there's very little wear there. Uh, that engine runs fantastic. It does, and you know, smoking is not necessarily a sign that. Um, you know, the in, something's wrong with the engine. Uh, it can be, certainly can be. There we go. Um, so smoking's not necessarily a sign that there's something wrong with an engine. Onans will inherently smoke because they're designed, uh, because they're that T-shaped design, they're, they're flat heads, and uh, the oil's gonna get past the seals. So after they've set a long time, they're gonna smoke. Um, I know on my 318, uh, when it sits for a couple months, it's going to smoke like a chimney. But if I get in the next day after I have uh, driven it the day prior for an hour or so, if I go start it up the next day, no problem whatsoever, no smoke. Um, you know, great, great machine. So um, that's how you test the compression on these these Onans uh, or any other, any engine. Um, in fact, I recently, probably in the upcoming uh, couple weeks, might be early, uh, might be mid January before I get around to it. Um, hopefully early January. I'll have a video. I just bought a diesel compression gauge um, because on these right here, it only goes up to 300 PSI and a diesel is going to have higher compression than 300. So um, you'll just blow the needle right off that gauge if you use a, uh, if you put it in a diesel engine. Uh, but we're going to test the compression on the Gator uh, in a future video uh, that'll be coming up hopefully by mid-January. I got the gauge last week, need some parts from Deer. 
uh, for the injection system, things like that. That'll be coming up. Some of my issues with the Gator will be coming up in uh, the next couple videos. So thanks for watching.